Oh, g'day, it's Dave here. I just want to go through using JoJabra and how useful the program is. So if you open JoJabra up, you'll get a screen looking like this. Uh, you can just drag that bar across anywhere you want so you can see your functions. Uh, for your view, I suggest you put your grid on so you get that little finer line. Now, some things that you may want to do is you may want to move your axis. So if you come over here, you just got to get your mouse right. You can move the axis where you want. Um, the other thing is you can scale your axes by just clicking on the axes there and just dragging it down. Um, and you can do the same thing on this one. So if you just click and drag, you can make the axes look however you like. Now, today, in, what, in terms of what the lesson we're going to do is we're going to be looking at inserting uh, using a slider. So the first thing, you come across these bars here, give you all your functions. So this one here, I'm going to insert a slider. Okay, over there, we're going to call our slider A. I'm going to change that to go from minus 10 to 10. Now you can go in increments of 0.1 or you can go in increments of 1. So that will give you whole numbers. Okay, now if you click on that, um, go to my pointer over here. If I click on my uh, slider, uh, I can format that. And so therefore that means that I can change the color of that. Just make it blue. Let's make it a bit thicker so it's easy to see. Um, and that's probably all I need to do for that. All right, so then I can by should better move that. So if I go to move objects, I can move that. Uh, no, can't seem to move that. All right, just leave it there for now anyway. In terms of this next part. Uh, what I want to do is I want to insert a function into here. So the function I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to call it f of x. So we'll do f bracket, and inside there you'll need to type your function as x equals. Let's do it as a times by x, and we'll do x cubed. So we have to use our caps lock, which is shift 6, okay, and we'll do it to the power 3. Okay, it gives me that sort of function. Now, obviously if I use my slider, I can change what that function looks like and how it goes. Now, let's just go for x equals 1, a equals 1. So that is y equals x squared, all right, if you think about that. Now, again, I can format that particular graph by do my color. Let's go blue again. Uh, let's go to style, make it quite thick. And we'll close that. Now, if I want to see that graph a little bit easier, again, I can click on, if I go to my thing over here, I can move my axes, and that will allow me to scale that out a little bit this way. All right, so you can see that going that way, which looks a bit better in terms of the appearance. Now, the next function I'm going to do is do the derivative of that function. So if you've got H, so F, no, let's do G. So FG, bracket, x. Now what I like to do is I like to do the derivative of that. So if I start typing in deriv, see it gives me the derivative function up here. And then I can just type in, in there, I can highlight in this here, and I'm going to say the derivative of f bracket x. Right? And enter. And it does the derivative of that function. Again, I can now um, I can actually do the properties of that. Let's make that a uh, thick again. Let's make that a red function. Now notice over here, my blue function is my function. My red function is my derivative. All right, so that's that's really good in terms of that. Now, if I want to do my second derivative, uh, let's do h h bracket of x. You got to type it in right. H of x. And that equals, and again we'll do the derivative, right, and double click on that, and click inside here, and if we want to do the second derivative of f of x, we have to do the derivative of g of x, right, and if you can type right, then you'll be a lot quicker at doing this than I am. Enter there, and again we can make that another colour, so I'll click on that line, and we make that say a purple line or pink line we make that thick again so you can see it quite easily close 
right so again that's color coded over there for me now the good thing about this is once I go to my slider if I move my slider I can see how that changes can I? Right, so let's just go back to one now one of the things that you might want to do is you might want to click on that and you can you can sort of uh, rename it but I can uh, I think I can hide that view uh, I'm just trying to think I'm not as good at this I haven't used this program that much lately so I can actually hide object okay so I can actually hide that if I want to and edit um, view sorry do it there well sorry and then hide object so I can actually hide that as well now the other thing that I will you'll need to better do maybe for an investigation would be to find the derivative of function all right so I actually for this particular function I can see it's not going to have a max or a min but what I could do is I could actually go and find the inflection point so if I type in inflection, see it comes up with inflection point, um, then I can do the inflection point of f of x, bracket x, okay, and you can see that a, um, a point here appears at a. So again, I can click on that point, I can format that, let's make it massive, right? and I can change the color of that to be um, let's make it black uh, let's make it green and then I can also if I go to my basics I can choose to have the name and the value there all right so what you'll see I actually can't see it very well I might just change that back to black so you can see that clearly so color let's go to black so now you can see that I've got my inflection point a and I've got it labeled so I know what that, that point would be all right now the other thing I could do in this particular function I could put a new point on that graph anywhere okay and if I uh, format that point let's make it big again so you can see it for this purpose and I can have my basic so I have my name and my value all right so that's the point um, I could move that point anywhere I like and just stick on the line okay so you could actually do that again with your text box so I think you can move the text box off, off the line there so you can actually see it again if I make that black um, you will actually better see that a little bit better for that so it's about getting something you can see quite clearly and again you know I can move that point wherever I like and you can see that now I don't know if you really want to do that for this investigation because we will be looking at max points min points um, now let's show so if we go to edit we'll go show the object and if we hide this one over here uh, edit and hide um, and we can also hide that point there uh, right so let's say this is my function here I want to actually find the min point so if I type in min uh, min uh, so minimum and right, so I type in my function so my function there is g of x Just close that. So in here I type in my function. Just highlight that down the bottom here. Hope you can see this in the video. G G bracket X. I'll type in properly. Right, and then the start value. So let's say I went from minus 10 and then I'm going to 10. So what that will do, a little bit like on your calculator, it will find the minimum value between those two values. And again, you've seen point C there. Okay, so if again, if I 
do the properties there I could make that black because we know you can see that easily a style let's make that really big so you can see it and go to our basics and you can see the name and the value right so then I can click on that C value and therefore you can see that that is my minimum and so my minimum for my first derivative is in fact the same as my inflection point for my second derivative all right so uh, in terms of because that is obviously uh, a non-stationary point of inflection there all right so you get do you get the idea about how to use this program now if I want to add some more sliders then what I'll do over here is uh, put the slider where I want to put it and I'm going to call that one B and again I can go from minus 10 to 10 and in increments of 1 I think stick the whole numbers here for the investigation and again I can format that like uh, I do anything else oh. so format the property color you can change that color to be red if you like and the slider style um, make that you know big again so you can see it quite easily and again so now it's just a matter of sliding it across so this is how you can do your a b c d for your function and so you could if you set this basic thing up for a b c d e or a b c d and then maybe put a k in there you can just use the same graph for every time to to actually do all the functions that you need to do because you can make a whatever it is on the on the front bit so set set it up once you can do all of your graphs using GeoGebra uh, and then you can play around with it quite easily and you can rescale it as I showed so again rescaling is to come down over here and you just simply um, click on the axis and drag so you can make that whatever scale you want to do now the key thing about this is once you've done that if you print screen that you can come into any word document and you could paste that in there okay and that will be able to now crop that if you want to that's what I'd be doing I'd be cropping that I could just get the bit that I'm really interested in with my cropping don't need to see the stuff on the side and then you can make that a bit bigger so you can see it easily alright so you can easily format that now if you make that tight um, <clears throat> that means you can move that anywhere in your document like any any uh, any graphic all right so that really should save you a lot of time if you use your um, GeoGebra to do all your graphing it looks very professional but it actually saves you a lot of time as well